Welcome to This Week in Orthodoxy, the world's only online video newscast focused on events in the life of the Orthodox Church. I'm Emmy Luveris. In news from around the globe, our top story has press reports confirming that the geographical borders of the Episcopal Assemblies in North and South America will be changed. Church leaders made the decision at the recent synexus of the Orthodox Churches in Istanbul. Instead of holding one assembly for bishops in Canada, the U.S. and Central America, a separate assembly will be established for each. And our next story reveals something rather unexpected about the early days of Orthodoxy in America. March 27th will be the 247th anniversary of the repose of Colonel Philip Ludwell III of Williamsburg, Virginia. Who is that and what does he have to do with the Orthodox Church, you might ask? Well, he's the earliest known recorded convert to Orthodox Christianity in America and happens to be an important historical figure in colonial Virginia. He was the largest landowner and friend and relative of many founding fathers, including George Washington and Benjamin Franklin. He translated the Divine Liturgy and other Orthodox texts into English in the 1740s and raised his family in the Orthodox faith. To mark the occasion, on March 16th, the Russian Orthodox Church outside Russia celebrated the first ever Orthodox Christian Divine Liturgy in a place well known to Ludwell himself, the College of William and Mary's historic Wren Chapel. And highlighting the expansion of the Orthodox Church in places you might not expect, first on the west coast of Scotland, to a scenic chain of islands, Father Seraphim Aldea, a Romanian Orthodox priest monk, is hoping to found an Orthodox monastery for women on the island of Mull. Nearly a million people per year travel through Mull as pilgrims on their way to the famous Isle of Iona, the center of medieval Irish monasticism. An 18th century church has already been donated and Father Seraphim is currently in the U.S. raising money to restore it and to build a small number of new cells for the future monastics. For more information, be sure to visit mallmonastery.com. And moving on to the other side of the world with a very different ministry context, parishioners of the Dormition of the Theotokos Mission in Rizal, Philippines, are taking matters into their own hands and rebuilding their six-year-old church themselves. Using whatever material is at hand, sand, bamboo, coconut lumber, and good old hard work. The Mission Parish serves 65 families living below the poverty line and is part of the Antiochian Orthodox Christian Archdiocese of Australia, New Zealand, and the Philippines. Coming up, St. Ticon Seminary in New York will be hosting its annual vocations retreat on April 11th and 12th. The weekend encounter is designed to help men discern their calling to serve the Lord and His Church. The theme for this year's retreat is responding to Jesus' call, Be My Priest. There is no cost for participating. Visit stots.edu for more information. And in news from OCN, the Lenten season is traditionally a very spiritually focused time and programs like this help bring our listeners support in their faith walk. As you may know, all of OCN's projects, including podcasts, radio programs, blogs, and web-based ministries are 100% listener supported. Gifts from people like you are what make the ministry possible. Please consider making a donation this Lenten season to help us spread the joy of Orthodoxy at Pascha and throughout the year. You can donate by visiting our website at myocn.net and also by purchasing Orthodox books, CDs, and other religious items on OCN's Amazon store. That's it for this week in Orthodoxy. Until next time, let's go forth in peace. For everyone here at the OCN Studios, I'm Emily Veras.